recording uh, and thanks everybody who joined. Today's agenda as uh, composed by Loa, uh, thank you, uh, is as uh, I'm sharing, it's on the screen. Uh, feel free to bash it uh, or propose uh, other business as he puts it there with a repeated number four. I don't see any share. Oh, I am sharing. Can others see it? Is is anyone? See it, yes, I can see it. Okay. Uh, me too. Odd. Okay. Um, I let me know if I need if I can do anything on my side to help it out, uh, Stuart. Mm, I I can stop and start again if you. It might make more sense for Stuart to start and stop again. I mean, stop and I'll start. I'll exit again. and rejoin. I'll exit and rejoin. Yeah. But carry on. I'll join. I'll catch okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Tarek, yeah. small comment. It's yeah. correct that I posted the agenda, but it's actually more or less self organized. It's uh, the uh, thing Kiriti asked for last time, uh, the thing uh, Tony had that we postponed one one meeting and then we had a request from Greg and that's it. I totally so I agree. Yeah, I, I haven't done much. No, I, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, most of the, and this is why I'm asking people if they think want to object to the to the agenda, please speak up. Uh, <clears throat> I don't. I, I have no objections to the agenda. Trust me. Okay. Uh, um, uh, the first the first item is the review of the design uh, team action items. Uh, uh, we don't have too many open, but uh, we can go and edit the ones that are. So the first one is on the agenda today. Uh, I'll just put that it is on the agenda. And Kiriti will be talking about it. The second item is a long-standing one, and uh, we have uh, we have um, you know multiple speakers have came up with uh, slides and we reviewed those in the past. The last was uh, Jimmy, uh, who's done that on the third of March, and the slides we have appointed to them. Uh, are we expecting? Further discussions on this or any other uh, proposals. So we have the design team proposals and we were di dissecting them. Um, there are potentially other proposals. Do we want to keep this open or should we track it with another action item? Uh, I'm, e I'm open either way. May make sense to close this and open a new one for the other ones. Yeah, I think. Uh, hi, Tariq, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi. Hi, G. Yeah, I think according to the mainly this discussion about the concerns on the ISD, perhaps some um, further <clears throat> analysis about the hardware uh, processing and the implementation. For the ISD will be helpful for the design team. Okay. <coughs> are you uh, volunteering to be signed? Are you going to talk about this, Jimmy? Is that yeah, I'm, I'm. I think in my uh, presentation, we had some analysis and comparison between ISD and PSD, right? Did we have consensus? Like, did, uh, did we reach consensus? I think we. I don't think we have some conclusion, but it just shows that uh, there's a 
uh, pros and cons for each one and uh, the uh, problem with ISD is the complexity in the pushing and the uh, tracing node processing and also the uh, some limitations in the encoding. I think this will need to be considered uh, if we people propose that uh, to use ISD for some of the applications. If they have different opinion or different analysis, uh, I think okay. it is a good time to show them to the design team. Okay, I see other people want to talk about this as well. So Greg is next in the queue. Uh, why don't you go ahead, Greg? Thank you. Um, uh, I would encourage and remind that not to uh, refer to um, consensus because that's uh, uh, something that uh, determined by uh, working group chairs. Uh, conclusion, I think that, yes, you stated your point of view and uh, uh, other views were expressed. So uh, I think that that's uh, settled. So you shared your concerns. Uh, there are other opinions. Uh, have we converged? Have we agreed on something? Uh, I don't see it because there's still, and I still believe that um, the ISD uh, being used uh, with a clear uh, purpose and understanding of uh, the mechanisms and why it's needed, uh, it's viable option. And uh, I don't see the good reason uh, not to uh, use it uh, for uh, special cases. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Greg. And uh, there were uh, there was Kriti next in the queue. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I think that we've beaten this um, as far as it, as we can. I think that from the point of view of uh, understanding what it takes to implement it today, we have some views. I don't think we have any consensus or any agreement, but um, I think the high order bit for me is <clears throat> both ISD and PSD are implementable in today's hardware. I think the problem is that this, the way we consider this um, has to be, I think we need to be very clear how we consider this input. There are two, there are three things that we have to consider. One is what do, um, what can hardware that's in the field <clears throat> that's been deployed, what can that hardware do and how can we best accommodate that hardware? In some cases, we can uh, do some things with that hardware. And in many cases, we can't do too much except maybe avoid sending them uh, sending uh, that hardware uh, new features, which we know that they can't implement. Um, the second thing is, what does current hardware do? And I think that's the analysis that was done here. Uh, and then the third thing is, what will or what ca what could future hardware do? And I think this is where we have to be very careful that we don't constrain the future with the present. So if we look at what the current hardware can do, and based on that, we make decisions, then we're basically saying new innovations, new ideas that might come out, uh, we've sort of taken them off the path because we're saying, oh, this is what current hardware does, we're gonna follow that path. So I think we, this whole analysis should be, um, if anything, a giant red flag um, saying, the approach you're taking really won't work, or it should be a, a guide. And I don't think it should be a giant red flag. I don't think it should be, um, like I said, you don't want to constrain and you don't even know what future hardware will be able to do. I think it should be a guide saying, we're not too far off or yeah, if we were to go down this path, we would require these new things from hardware. But anything more than that, I think we're fooling ourselves because um, innovation is going to continue happening. This entire thing, I mean, MPL, <coughs> MPLS, um, when it first came out, uh, 
what we basically did, and I wasn't the, the main person there, but the folks who did it said, yeah, this is doable. We don't know exactly what the details are. We don't know how many labels we have to process, but let's go on with it. And we'll, we'll adapt the hardware uh, to the new requirements. Here, I think yeah. we should be in the same spirit. Um, let's keep going. Let's define what we would like to see. And then we know that the hardware will adapt to it, but let's not do something really foolish and you know, try to put things that we know are absolutely not doable. And that's the way I would take this. I, I, I think anything more than that, uh, we're we're not doing uh, the MTLS design a, a favor where we're working uh, in the wrong direction. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Preeti. Uh, Tony, you're next, uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my view is that we don't have a consensus. Uh, we are not making progress, that the discussion is simply reiterating the same points over and over again. And I see no way of making forward progress and, here other than for the chairs to simply uh, make a call. Um, and I would ask that we not turn today's session into another reiteration of the exact same points. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't have anybody else uh, want to comment on this. So I just to answer your question, sorry, <clears throat> sorry, Eric, um, I, I would say close this action and maybe open a new one along the lines uh, that Tony proposed. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I, I hear that the chairs needs to in, in, need to intervene and, uh, and decide on the next steps. I'm not gonna take the decision now. Uh, I wanna leave it up for discussion. And it's possible that exactly what you suggested, Kiriti and Tony will happen. Uh, we might close this uh, action item and and uh, and you know whatever comes out of that discussion will will, will be tracked with an act, a new one new action item. Uh, can uh, I have some we... comments, uh, please? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I did yeah, see you so... raise your hand. Uh, for you, please use yeah. that tool. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm uh, I'm still driving. There might be some noise, but I'd like to add some comments here. Um, I, I think there are, I, I hear some um, uh, different uh, um, um, motivations to have this uh, uh, SD design. Uh, some uh, said it's a design for future, but some also said it's uh, actually must be supported by uh, today's hardware, even, no matter how old it is. Um, actually, I, I'm I'm not sure if uh, actually detailed analysis on the current hardware is actually done, because um, um, based on my analysis on the uh, today's programmable uh, high-end switch chips, it's extremely difficult to uh, support the um, the current ISD design. Uh, that's an FAI. Um, so I I don't think it's a, we can conclude that it's a easily uh, implementable today. And for tomorrow's hardware, I already said that uh, no matter how advanced technology is, it will benefit good design more than the bad design. So we still need to follow the, some design principles uh, to make it as simple as possible. Because, um, yeah, we, 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 we will see that there, there maybe in the future, it makes a difference uh, smaller. That's, that's uh, um, uh, very possible, but still, uh, we should stick to uh, the good design principle. That's my opinion. Thank you. Oh, well, you just look at, be uh, uh, honest to what I will type. Um, when you said it's not possible, on which hardware is it? Uh, what uh, I, I just uh, tried to use a P4 to describe it. It's diff very, very difficult. So in P4, because okay, I know that Kiriti has already uh, made a, uh, a claim that uh, yeah, I, I didn't hear uh, clear analysis. Uh, I mean, uh, detailed analysis. He just uh, have some very brief conclusion. But I I like to see 
the the actual um, detailed analysis because I have yeah. a given my analysis. I, I, want, I, I want to see. I, I just want to record, uh, you know, what your claim is. Uh, you're saying that on which hardware or which, you know, programming language. Uh, uh, is I, I P4. I, I just write P4. Yeah. So in P, that's your claim. In P4, uh, ISD is not possible. Yeah, no, 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 not possible. It's a very difficult. Uh, I already gave the analysis. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a, it's even either bloated the state machine or make it very, very slow. To pass. Okay. That just tell us that P four is not a good uh, future proof language. Uh, no, P four. Uh, I I. I I am pretty sure that for even for Broadcom's uh switch chips they uh use a similar uh parser uh architecture, it, uh, although they didn't open the programmability to end users, but they you, uh, follow the same similar architecture. So the same principle applies here there uh, either uh, as well. Uh. I don't want to claim, make that claim on Broadcom. I, I would be happy to add it, but the problem is there are Broadcom people uh, on multiple proposals that claim. That yeah, yeah, e exactly. I like to see their uh, input. So we don't have them so far. Uh, it's just some oral, um, you know, uh, statement. I, I think that's not enough. No, I think you are making the statement for on their behalf. I, no, I no, I, I, I'm no, no. I just saying. I, 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 I know they have the similar uh, parser implementation architecture, but I didn't claim. Uh, if they have a analysis see, to show, okay, it's uh, efficient for them to implement that. That's fine because they have a more uh, in-depth knowledge. Of course, I, I like to hear their opinion. I didn't make any claim. I just say, I didn't see their actual uh, input on this. We we like to see hear hear from them. Okay, I, I know Loa is raising the, his hand, and I'd be happy, you know, to let anyone else. Uh, you know, Loa, you want to go ahead? Uh, sure. Uh, I was just uh, thinking about. Uh, I think Tony said that we can make a call. I would actually like to do at least use cases and requirements before I do that call. So have them adopted as working group documents. So it's not this week or next week, it's kind of three, four weeks out. Uh, I hope that's okay because it's uh, easier for, our, for, work, for the chairs to do it that way. Uh, I know G is uh, in the queue next. Do, do you want me to put it down, uh, Loa, on record? Three weeks. I think I think you can uh, put an action item on the shares to call, and it shouldn't be on the same action item. It should be on the new one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to actually work on calling the. Um, uh, what we should call it, discrepancies we have uh, about ISD and PSD. And I actually think we need to include implicit in that, that also. But I think it will take a couple of weeks to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Derek. Uh, I, I just want to give a quick uh, reply to what uh, Kriti said. I think uh, I agree that the, the analysis should be done on the old hardware, the existing hardware, and also the future hardware. I think this is uh, important if we think uh, ISD can be supported in the old hardware. Also, uh, some detailed analysis will be very useful. And another thing is actually this analysis would need to be done with some uh, specific uh, uh, size of the ISD. 
because this is uh, related to the uh, uh, the benefit of using ISD. If we use an ISD, but it has a large num amount of label stacks, uh, I think this benefit will be of the label depth parsing will be uh, uh, eliminated. This is uh, so the analysis should also include how many uh, labels will be uh, included in the ISD. I think this is just my uh, comments. The to... ISD is variable length and it depends on the actions that are invoked. There's no analysis to be done here. But if we <clears throat> include it in the label stack, due to the label stack depth the limitation, um, the size of the ISD will impact uh, how you how many times you need to include it in the label stack, and also the uh, overhead of including label ISD mm -hmm. in the whole label stack. Right, Jimmy. Regardless, if you put it in stack or post stack, if the LSR cannot reach it, it cannot read it. Right. Yeah, this is uh, not uh, just uh, the re to reach it. Mm. <clears throat> it is about uh, if you include it multiple times no no no. i mean the idea is regardless where it shows maybe uh 500 bytes away from the start or um uh, you know the idea is there is a limitation on yeah the so, part, right? so i think so it, it, there's a limit yeah. i mean so it's, uh, it's for the isd to work it there's uh, like a maximum size of the expected isd right if 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 i may go ahead uh, but but, but uh, sorry, Greg. I, I just want to state that, you know, there are other people in the queue. Maybe ah, Loa. Okay. Uh, I think you left your hands up, Loa and Jimmy. Uh, no, I'm you... taking my down. Okay, then Greg, go ahead. You're you're next. Yes, thank you. Uh, what I want to uh, point out is that we are discussing uh, whether this mechanism can be used, not how it's used for the particular function. And that's, in my opinion, is a big difference. Uh, the impact of uh, ISD or PSD in any particular scenario, a use case, can be discussed and should be discussed and will be discussed, in my opinion. But if we say that no, no matter what the functionality and purpose, should not use ISD, I think this is the wrong path. Because there is a difference. What you're asking the questions, G, is how it will impact. When we have the use case that we want to, uh, where pro someone proposes to use ISD, then we can discuss it. Other one, otherwise, it's just right, as Tony pointed out, we're walking in circles. It's different between what we have in the toolbox, whether it's how we use the toolbox. Yeah, I'm just uh, giving another. So can I uh, can I jump in with uh, a request to the chair? I, I, I'm sorry, we, one second, Riti. Uh, Stewart has been waiting in the queue. Yeah, uh, I understand. Oh. I just have a request to the chair. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Make that. Uh, we're trying to um, decide whether or not we carry this action item forward. And we've spent half an hour on it already. Okay. Okay. I uh, I will let Stewart uh, just state his uh, opinion because he hasn't spoken yet, and then we can we can uh, cut it uh, at this uh, uh, stage. Uh, Stewart, go go ahead. So I, I I'm beginning to you know, having listened to that conversation about whether you can and can't do some of these things. I think we need to be writing down some realistic stacks in the case of a number of realistic user examples and sort of build some virtual but semi-practical experience on what some of these stacks are going to look like in real cases. And then we can have an argument or a, or a discussion, I should have said, from a perspective of strength and knowledge. But whereas at the moment, I think there's an awful lot of speculation going on. Uh, that's a good suggestion. Uh, uh, are you suggesting that you will be pro producing that example or uh, example? 
Well, I was sort of hoping that uh, that, um, that 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 people advocating a solution should produce the set of examples to show how their solution would address each of these uh, each of the cases that we're going to consider as realistic cases, uh, because they are presumably more familiar with the nuances of their design. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree that, that um, in Critis uh, FAI draft, it has uh, given us several use cases there. And for one of them, like the non further fast rerouting, I have uh, raised several uh, issues or questions about it in the email list. I think that's a good starting point to uh, start the discussion, uh, uh, the, all the implications of uh, such a design. Thank you. How are you? Can you uh, produce that specific example with a realistic uh, label stack? Oh, so, so I, I, I would go back to my sort of real, you know, my, you know, the nub of my proposal, which is that if you want to have your design as a candidate, you ought to show uh, what the stacks look like in the example use cases that we that we're building. I mean, you're going to have to have it as part of the design document anyway, when it, when it eventually gets published. So it's it really should be, uh, you know, part of part of putting forward a solution should be, and this is what it looks like in each of the uh, each of the use cases. Okay, I think each solution document we have multiple uh, can come up with a exactly, how... yeah, exactly, and then we can compare the solutions. Um, with some, uh, you know, uh, uh, understanding their practical properties. Okay. Or am I am, am I guilty of volunteering other people to do work or something? I mean, yeah, I, I agree. This would be the duty of the people who uh, actually propose a um, solution the use case. And uh, yeah, there are many uh, points need to be uh, make it clear what's the assumption uh, here and uh, uh, the solutions and the implications. So, uh, because I, I, in my view, I see that uh, uh, no further fast rerouting is a very good case. It has a you know some novelty uh, on, on operations required on the um, uh, data pass. So um, I think if we uh, clearly study uh, it as a one example, I think it's a it's a very good starting point. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, well IOEM is another one that we have to study. Yeah, I, that that will be for the good study point for the PSD. I think because uh, we um, all agree that uh, for the trees, right? That's a it's a impossible to be put in the in stack. So. That will be a good example to study the post stack um, uh, PSDs. Anyway, we've got a bunch of applications. Um, we've got a bunch of candidate solutions. As part of deciding that we, between those solutions, we will have to understand what the what they really look like, and maybe we should if we bring that forward, then we can use it to understand some other properties of the thing that we're dealing with. Okay. Um, I did capture that um, it's on record now, and I would, you know, remind the solutions document authors to think about presenting this example and get back to us. I do want to move on to the next action item. Um, next it action item is something that we uh, we did uh, tag last uh, uh, couple of weeks as a lower priority. Um, I just go over it, and if you think anything changed in this regard, we can talk or prioritize that. It's the idea of generalizing the meaning of actions or network actions uh, to be user defined, and then talk about the uh, you know uh, the scope of these uh, definitions. Is it uh, domain wide or uh, LSP scope? Uh, and uh, we we know about the standardized one, uh, the ones that we're trying to standardize network actions. So I noticed that some people claiming that uh, you know uh, uh, being able to define the user actions uh, is something that is uh, and rather than carrying it in the packet, we can define it and signal it out of band. So if you think that this should be uh, bumped up, uh, it's right now at the bottom of the priority, and we can reshuffle. Um, 
if no change, then I can uh, save this and go back to the agenda. I think it would be worth bumping this up, at least so that people can um, review it, can think about it, and and decide if it's something we want to do. It's something that, for example, when we did um, any type of reserved uh, uh, section, uh, if you if you have an IANA uh, section, and I'm talking in general, like for example, code points uh, for. Um, RSVP. Um, it's always nice to have one, uh, a, a small section that says this is user defined or this is defined in the context of a particular uh, implement, in a particular deployment. And that uh, has a value that if you haven't standardized something, but you want to play with it, um, you have some space to do that. So I think it's worth uh, at least bumping up in people's minds so that they take a look and say, is this a useful uh, idea? It's something that we might want to even put in requirements. So the requirements, uh, people can also take a stab at saying what this might look like, and then we can bring it back to, I mean, if they think it's important enough, if the working group thinks it's important enough, we can bring it back to solutions documents and say, in your solution, how would you accommodate user defined? But um, I think we first need to give it some higher profile so people can start thinking about it. Thank you, Kiriti. Um, I don't see anyone else wants to comment on this. So, unless you prove me wrong, and I'll save this and switch back to the. Um, Agenda and the second item we have is a uh, continuation of your speech, Kriti, on the first nibble uh, draft. And the question that we are posing is how we want to progress on this draft. Uh, do we have any concerns with the approach we took? So before um, we decide or we, we start the discussion on how to progress this draft, let me say uh, a couple of things that we want to do, or the, you know, when we came up with the draft, some of the things that we wanted to do. The first thing is um, we wanted to make it very clear that any sort of hacks, uh, and there have already been hacks uh, using that first nibble um, are either just, you know, don't do this, uh, you know, either should not do this or must not do this. And right now the wording is more along the lines of should not, but I think we really should go to a must not do this. So someone who looks at the first nibble and says, based on this, I'm going to decide that this packet is an IPv4 or IPv6 packet, um, whether they want to do it, that for payload identification, whether they want to do that for load balancing reasons, these are not good ideas, and there are other ways of doing this. Um, either if you want better entropy, use an entropy label or use a fat pseudo wire. But the idea that you can identify a packet based on that first nibble and do something useful uh, based on that, um, we've already proved that this doesn't work. And sort of uh, the corollary to that is if you're not sending bare IP packets within an MPLS stack, if the first uh, word or the first byte after the end of the stack is not an IPv4 or IPv6 packet, please, please, please put a control word, uh, put something there that uh, will make it clear that um, it's not an IPv4 packet, doesn't even look like an IPv4 packet. Because if it's an ethernet packet, the first nibble could look, I mean, could be four, and you could then be fooled into things. So, because we already have these implementations out there, um, we we need to uh, to make sure that those existing implementations that are already deployed uh, do not make bad decisions on packets. So the, there is a question of uh, you know anything that's not a bare IPv4 packet uh, should or strongly recommended. <clears throat> that we have a control word or a control word like thing. Um, so the the you know I think it would be it would serve us all well to say that should become a must. 
and and then we have to decide you know how we move to that world and what we do with existing uh, implementations but i think that is a very useful thing to say um and 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 did you say that again hmm. i'm sorry siri has decided to get into this conversation I apologize <laughs> um so 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 one thing was to to point out some of these uh these sort of heuristics that we've used and uh to sort of try to reduce the negative impact of those heuristics the second thing is to say that this um first nibble should not be viewed as an ip it should not mirror the ip uh, version number registry yes we did call out four and six as something special because people were using those for doing, uh, recognizing IP and doing load balancing. The first label follows an MPL uh, label stack uh, is whatever it is. And if we're going to use it for something else, uh, that doesn't mean we should follow the IP uh, version numbering. And then the last thing is, um, I think we're all um, pretty much, dis, uh, you know, in favor of having PSD. The discussion, you know, the long and non-terminating discussion on ISD, uh, you know, keeping that aside, we all we all agree that there is a need for PSD. And the way I would like to look at it is existing um, sort of things that come after the label stack have already. I mean, it's it's useful to see them as early versions of uh, PSD. So control word, whether it is for pseudowires or DetNet, this way of thinking, the beer uh, header, uh, which is signaled by a beer label, but um, that's also uh, PSD. And so we need a reg registry for new values that we're going to use for PSD. Um, and so, uh, you know, so this this first nibble registry was a starting point for that. Um, I refreshed the document because it was either expired or about to expire without any changes. But I think the important thing that uh, occurred to me while I was doing this is let's not f um, sort of force ourselves into a nibble and only four bits of value, that 16 values, we could say we will actually have a full byte that says, what is the type of the PSD? And we have to be careful for all values where the first nibble is four. We just don't use them because of you know his, historical reasons. All values where the first nibble is zero or one, we don't use them similarly. But all new values, if I were to create uh, a, a new type uh, whose first nibble is two, we can actually have uh, 16 values behind that because we can use the full byte instead of just the nibble. This is just an optimization so that we have more bits to play with for types. But the idea is that this first nibble becomes sort of a registry for PSD types. And, and we might have a standard header and I think this is something along the lines of what how you had in his extension header thing, where you have uh, a type there and then maybe a length, uh, overall length of the PSD, and then you can have TLVs for each uh, element within that. But the overall header that says, I have PSD, uh, uh, the PSD is of this type or you can call it a version or something, and then I have an overall length for it, and then below that, um, I'm going to have um, TLVs. And I want to separate those from control word and, and beer and IPv4, IPv6, and whatever else we already have defined. So to keep this in some sensible, meaningful way, uh, have a registry for this. So that's basically the overall uh, idea behind this, this draft. Um, so A, um, document what has happened and certain things that we have done aren't good. Document that this is not a replacement or a copy of the IPv4 uh, registry. 
and have a registry for post stack data types. So comments or questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, any any objections on the approach? Uh, let me you know state it in a different way. Uh, any objections on the approach we're taking to uh, to have a registry and uh, track all the uses of the first nibble uh, post uh, stack MPLS stack? I have a couple of questions here. Um, so I think overall goal it, it's great to actually see what's um, what are we carrying. However, what um, puzzles me when I watch um, this discussion and, and similar discussions are that we are really throwing into the label stack and new values without giving a chance for any implementation to know what's on the stack ahead of parsing every element and without giving an offset to actually fetch that um, new element uh, directly. So that worries me because, because we are actually adding maybe useful information but we are breaking fundamental label stack uh, notion of MPLS. Um, Robert, so can I ask a question before Kriti? Uh, when you say uh, uh, we are we are proposing new values, do you mean like for example beer use uh, the use of uh, beer for that nibble, or or, or do you mean uh, specific? Can you be more specific on? I mean we are adding the label stack entries, not necessarily nibble. Uh, into the label stack, and nibble is effectively part of the label stack because it's an MPLS creature, it's MPLS working group, right? So we are adding elements to a label stack without explicitly calling them and giving ability for hardware to fetch it by offset. Oh, I think your comment is more generic than the yes, context it is. of this draft. It uh, is. Okay. Okay. So, I, I, um, mm. Go ahead, if I can, if I can try to answer this, this is very, very clearly not a label, not a part of the label stack. This is post stack data. The label before the the nibble or whatever you want to call this thing has to have the end of stack bit, and this is very much after the label stack. So the in stack data, for example, has been very clear that you must respect the end of stack bit. You cannot use all 32 bits uh, of an in stack data. You must have the end of stack bit reflect the true end of stack. So, so you're not. So you at best get 31 bits out of 32, and maybe even fewer depending on other things. But this is post stack, and this is very much. I mean, yes, it's being proposed. Uh, actually, it's not even completely true that it's being proposed by MPLS. It was proposed by Pseudowire, the first example, um, as a way of uh, putting something uh, in front of the Ethernet packet so that uh, you don't confuse it with, uh, with IP. It was proposed by Beer. It was proposed by DetNet. Um, and yes, it was all of these were in the context of using MPLS, but they're not proposed by MPLS. And they're all very much after the label stack. So I'm not sure where your comment comes from. This has nothing to do with the label. No, no, Giretti. I mean, so what I'm saying is there is usefulness in this, and I know it's coming after end of stack uh, equal one. But what I'm saying is what I'm missing is ability to fetch it directly from the offset reading the header of the label stack, which we don't have. That's my point. Yeah, but we never had that. I mean, even if so you want are... to go to the IP, IP, I mean, if you want to go to the IP packet, forgetting all this, there were there were uh, ideas that you want to go to the IP packet to get better load balancing information. You had to parse the stack. I mean, that's the nature of MPLS. Yes, but we are redesigning MPLS. I have a feeling, right? So why don't? No, we... no, we are not redesigning MPLS. Well, I don't know. We are adding features to MPLS as much as possible in the spirit of the original MPLS architecture. I don't think this is original MPLS architecture, honestly. And I think I'm not the only one thinking that way. Which one is not? The, uh, the control word? Having the control word as a shim between payload and MPLS header? No, even ISD. 
Well, I, okay, I want to be. We're not more talking about ISD. No, no, I'm talking about, about it. It's MPLS yeah, architecture. Oh, oh, okay, I, I, I wish you did uh, pitch in when we were talking about that. So I don't, I don't. Uh, um, I we're guess we're not talking I'm... about it now, though, are we? We're talking about Karitis registry of um, first nibbles. Exactly. Right. I understand, but I'm saying is it's useful to fetch it without parsing this stack. And I'm trying to find a way if we can solve that ability. You look current yeah. MPLS or MPLS V2. I, I don't, I, I think that at best the first nibble is a hint. It's, it can be never more than a hint unless it's qualified by the label that, at the bottom of the stack or um, one of its friends. Right. Thanks, Stuart. That, that brings me to an important point because in the case of the control word, um, both for DetNet and for pseudowires, um, it is the, the fact that you have a control word is signaled in the control plane and it's not in the data plane. And so one of the other things that I wanted to achieve in this is to say I have a data plane uh, validation or, or, or indication that there is a post stack data and that data plane indication exists in the case of beer. But in the case of uh, the control word for DetNet or pseudowise, it doesn't exist. And those pseudo those control words have different formats. So it becomes doubly incumbent that the control plane does, especially on the egress, which has to process all this, um, you know, the contro mm -hmm. control plane in indications are very, you know, explicitly put in the hardware. So the hardware knows how to interpret them. That, con that the control word. Um, so in you know the 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 sort of other goal of having a type here uh, would help in parsing this the PSD and understanding how to um, uh, you know process it. But I agree with you that in addition to that, having a data plane indicator um, that you actually you know you have this coming up. Is useful. So we do that for Gal so, as well. So, right? Hang on a second, right? So, um, in um, in pseudowire and decknet, you don't need to touch the control word until you've popped the bottom of stack, and yes. you know when you pop the bottom of stack that the control word is there. So that's a simple self. No, but you problem. know in the control plane, the control plane knows that a. Um, a packet with a particular service or pseudo wire label consists of, of a control word of a certain format followed by a payload of a certain format. Note, by the way, right. that pseudo wire has several control uh, word designs. It's yes, just that yeah. some of it is, 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 is consistent. Right. It has several of them. Yeah, I, I agree. They're really, they're really a property of the payload, right? They're a property of what you're going to do when you've got it out of the MPLS system and you've got it in your next phase of processing. Yes, yes. I think you and I are probably in track. It'll just make sure that everyone else is in track. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, I, I see Loa is in the queue. Uh, he's raising right. hands. I've been, I've been there a long time. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> I actually raised my hand, my hand as soon as Kiriati started to talk. Um, oh, okay. I have a few comments. Uh, one, uh, the current draft does not talk about PSD at all. So this is a new uh, new thing that actually answers a question I had uh, about how we want to progress this uh, document. If we are making it a, a, a PSD registry, which I can I I can believe it would be a good thing. Then we should discuss it in the uh, uh, design team. I thought this was a more generic MPLS thing, and we could actually boost it to uh, the MPLS working group. Uh, and then I don't I don't I, that's one thing. Uh, stop that there. And then I have a question about why ISD is coming up. We have a post stack uh, 
data indicator uh, in this document. It has nothing to do with ISP, right? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, you're asking the question to uh, to Robert. Well, if you Robert wants to uh, to answer, that is fine. But uh, okay. it's more a general question. Okay. Well, my, my, to clarify what I meant was basically that it's useful to know what's in the stack or just behind the stack, right? So I was I was giving ISD as an example. To justify that it also can be indicator that ISD is somewhere on the stack. So would be nibble as well. So my comment was general, not necessarily just for the nibble discussion, but I wanted to include it with the nibble topic because it's one of the triggers. One of the things I would say is if we want a data plane um, understanding of what comes after the label stack, not, not the payload payload, but the immediate thing that comes after the label stack. Um, I think that's a very useful thing to have in the, uh, in the forwarding so that the forwarding can, you know, it, yes, it will be, it, it will be informed by the control plane as Stuart just mentioned. It will be informed by the control plane that once the label stack is over, please expect a control word and process it accordingly but but in the case of beer, in the case of gal, we have a label that sort of foreshadows. Yes, there's going to be post stack data, and and so for me, you know, the in stack data, you know, whether it's a special purpose label or an action bit that says, um, you know, there's going to be post stack data. I think that's a useful thing to have. So that when you get to processing whatever comes after the label stack, you know that there's post stack data and you know how to process it <clears throat> independent or, or in addition to the control plane. It gives me a warm and fuzzy data plane um, can process this. Um, and yes, we do want the control plane to be in sync, but, but it's sort of a, a, a you know, a nice thing to have. And it's not, I mean, in the case of control word, both DetNet and SudoWire, we have only the control plane, but in the case of beer and gal, uh, we also have data plane. So I think it would be a good thing to have going forward, but uh, because when you come to the post stack data, you need to know that there is post stack data before you even start trying to parse it. And if there isn't post stack data, then you need to process that whatever comes next as payload. So, uh, for example, even if it is as simple as we want to have multiple label stacks, then you could say, I have a an indicator in that first label or first byte that uh, this is the start of a new label stack. So, I think from a number of points of view, it's useful to have post stack data registry and I would feel more comfortable if there was an indicator ahead of the post stack data that said that there's post stack data coming up and process it as such. Thank you. Uh, I see Stuart uh, is in the queue. Why don't you go ahead, please? Um, I, 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 I'm convinced about this belt and braces approach, right? I mean, the 99% the of MPLS works without belt and braces and it works very well. And belt and braces is basically two processing action items you have to uh, uh, to follow. So I'm I'm not a great fan of um, of that. And um, put it, you, I think whatever happens, we have to have an indicator at the bottom of stack to say we need to get rid of all this ancillary data. Um, so I'm perfectly happy with personally with that being in the control plane. If I want two lots of ancillary data, then that's two stacks, right? Uh, two completely separate transactions to uh, to set up. So um, I don't understand the uh, uh, the logic in um, multi multi indicators of um, of ancillary data. You mean the control and data plane? Oh, um, well, I don't see the I don't see I think we need it in the control and the data plane. That's for sure. Okay. And in fact, we, we should, you know, I, I'm, I'm tending to the view, uh, I'm not quite sure I'm entirely aligned with Robert, but I'm tending to the view 
the MPLF was it was successful because it migrated a lot of stuff to the control plane, and I think we we tear that up at our peril. You're still there. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I see Loa is next. Uh, okay. So I have a question for Kireti. So what you want to do is actually to change uh, the first nibble just to be first nibble for, let's see, zero, one, four, five, six. All of the rest will actually be the first byte. Yes. Is that correct? I mean, that's just okay. a thought that. Yeah, I, I understand. I, mean, I was just, just um, yeah. wa wanted to, to see if I understand you correctly. I think yes. we need some discussion. Uh, sure. I, I, would, I would actually suggest that we take everyone about six and leave the other for first neighbors. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, there are multiple ways of doing it, but if we restrict ourselves to first nibble, which again is an artifact of the people trying to identify an IPv4 or IPv6 packet. So, I mean, we're kind of stuck there because of, and we've talked about first nibble for a long time. So even the pseudo wire control word uses zero or one, um, you know, just to avoid Four. But if we are looking at this more broadly as a um, type uh, of the PSD, <clears throat> then zero and one, of course, have been taken. Four and six have been taken. I think five is beer. So either we can uh, you say two and three are still in the nibble uh, region, but everything else becomes uh, a bite. That gives us many more types to play with. If we don't do that, we end up with uh, very few types, which might be okay because you know we could then say uh, there's a subtype or something else, and there's a TLD structure under this anyway. So I but don't understand. Just... I don't understand why we needed to take more than zero and one. To be honest, um, if we are going to introduce PSD the way we are thinking of. Um, uh, then basically we need a, and, and this is, I think, from how use draft, um, you, you have a header of headers, which is, uh, which basically says, here's the PSD, this is of type blah. And then below that, uh, you can have a, and here's an overall length of the PSD, uh, back to your point about, so, I need so to I'm, remove I'm, I'm all trying, of this. I'm, I, I think you're correct. You are correct that you know a, a header of headers and a, and a library, an, in, an index at the front, all that good things, right? But you cannot, if you've got a random packet, you cannot trust that first nibble because every possible value has been used in it in the raw, oh. in the network, because Ethernet addresses can have any value. No, I agree with that. And so that's the other part of this draft that tries to. You know, turn the screws on anyone who wants to send Ethernet packets without a control word saying, no, no, don't do that. And and I know we've tried it before. Uh, I think we need to try it again and maybe try it harder. I mean, I, I think he, I, mean, I think it, it, what, there was one vendor, I think it was, that uh, really pushed back against us making it mandatory. But nonetheless, it will still take 20 odd years to flush that stuff from the network. And even then, you can't be sure. Uh I, I will raise my hand. Can I no, no, uh, give some yes, comments? Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Well, one second. Uh, John Drake is before you. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. John, go ahead. I lowered my hand. Okay. Why you go ahead? Uh, yeah. So uh, in my uh, MPS extension header proposal, I actually reserve the first nibble um, without giving it any uh, definition. Uh, because I, I, I think, I believe uh, we shall never rely on the first nibble to identify the actual data type following it. Um, rather, we should use some um, uh, stable uh, indicator uh, sub in, in the label stack to do that. Um, 
but for some historical reason, uh, we should avoid to using the some specific values for the first neighbor, which has already uh, used before. But uh, that doesn't mean we shall actually standardize that and rely on that as a uh, type field. So, so uh, that's why in my proposal, I yeah following the uh, last uh, um, bottom stack label and uh, uh, in the first. Uh, First neighbor is reserved and uh, the um, length and the overall length and the original header type was actually encoded as a, uh, in the, some other fields. Just to be absolutely clear, and I know you're, I don't, I'm pretty certain you're not doing this, but to be absolutely clear, you can't trust anything that goes after an MPLS label stack unless you've got other qualified right, right. We, 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 yeah, right. we, we don't rely on opaque. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and, Following that argument, you know, whether you use the first nibble or not, um, if you have an indicator and, and, and so you can, you can have this argument with Stuart, but if you have an indicator in the label stack that there is post stack data, um, you, you, whether you use that first nibble or not, I mean, you're, you're basically wasting that first nibble, uh, because if you don't put four or six in it, you're good. Um, you still have the problem that, as uh, Stuart uh, uh, repeats uh, meaningfully, um, you cannot trust any any value, not just the first nibble. But if you avoid four and six, at least those people who are trying to use that for load balancing hacks, um, you know, you you don't have to worry about them. So not using that first nibble or or pinning it to some value. Uh, you're just wasting four bits, but you know that's just that's just. Me. So I think if you had a registry, then you could say, I can use that full byte or, or the first nibble at least, and not not confuse anyone. Um, so we need two things: we need to say avoid four and six, and um, make sure every um, pseudo wire, every Ethernet packet, is always has a control word. Or or post stack data ahead of it. Well, so I certainly I understand what you did, how you, but I don't think you need to do it that way. I mean, I mean, I certainly agree with writing down what the world looks like, so that people understand what it looks like and people don't tread on each other's toes. Um, I, I I'm not sure when we'll ever be able to rely on um, uh, non control word Ethernet packets living in the network. I'm just, just absolutely no idea how we would ever make sure that all of those were uh, were removed in a safe way. But I, I do that that, 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 that that is different from should we write down what the world looks like because we've got a whole bunch of experts on the on on here and we're having a long conversation. And, you know, in 10 years time, not many of us will be on this phone on, on this call. Oh, um, no, you, 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 I, I, you know, the way in which I meant that. John, uh, John Drake, you still have your hand up. Yeah, I was, I was just going to point out, um, the, uh, network action framework draft specifies that when you define a network action, you indicate whether it's, it has post stack data. So you will actually know if, a, if a given bit, if a given indicator is set, you will know that you are expecting post stack data. Yeah, so the, the the indicator itself tells you there is post stack data. There is no need Correct. for a for a start or nibble. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So you no, no, yeah. the start uh, unless, nibble. Unless, but, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not quite true, is it? Because if you accidentally go through a router that is doing old fashioned load balancing and you put a four or a six there, it might not do what you want with your packet. That's the. So uh, we, we, I think we said we weren't going to run. Network actions through routers that didn't understand network actions. They may understand network actions and still have that hack. No, uh, so John, I would I would change what you just said to there. There are two orthogonal things. One that says there is post stack data, and the second that says, um, okay, now I've reached the post stack data. How do I process this? And for that, um, it's it's really I mean, useful. Can, yeah. can can I just finish? Um, it's useful to have a header of headers as how you had in his draft. He tried to avoid the nibble, but once you're there, you might as well have 
a, a you know a, the the header of headers that says this is the type of post stack data this is the length of post stack data and here are all the TLBs in it and for that type of post stack data making sure that the first nibble is not four or six and just for completeness not zero or one or or five uh, would make you know any legacy router processing this, um, you know, fine, uh, you know, not not confuse this. So, so I think the the two are orthogonal. Having an indicator in the uh, in the uh, in the label stack that says there is post stack data coming up, um, is what I was saying about having data plane indication of this. And the second is when you actually get to the post stack data, how do I process it, and having a you know a type field there. That says this is the type of post stack data. Um, I, I think, and and then just being a little bit careful that the first nibble is not zero, one, four, five, or six, will help with legacy, or at least make us comfortable that legacy won't misinterpret it. So I think that the two orthogonal things. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, I was just people were talking about having some sort of indication that there was post stack data, and I was just pointing out that. We will have that. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, we have Loa next, and uh, I think we can. So, yeah, we just one comment on what Kiriati said about how will this actually originate. When we wrote the very first draft about using the first nibble for uh, checking if it had. Uh, four or six. The intention was to actually avoid uh, load sharing on or load balancing on uh, uh, any any other value, and that was the only thing we said. So this is. I'm willing to listen and see if we we can make something of this, but uh, I think that's still a bit to go. Sure, that, that sort of brings me to your question, you know, what do we want to do with this draft? But but um, I agree with you that when we started, we were trying to avoid four and six so that we don't load balance things uh, wrongly. But uh, so then we said, you know, the control word should start with zero. DeadNet also said control word should start with zero. Um, something else uses one, I think something to do with OAM, and then four and six, of course, are the things that we want to avoid, and BA uses five. So having those, you know, writing those down and saying, if we want to register for types for post tag data, these are all already taken, use a new one. Uh, if you want to have something in the data plane that tells you that there is post tag data, um, have an indicator in your MNA. You know, I, I think this all sort of works together for me, works well together for me. The thing that I would like to understand from you and Tarek and, and the working group chairs is, where do you want to take this? Um, what do we want to do with this draft? I, I am confused, Kariti, I am personally, because we are saying that avoid for, as, as certain nibbles, and then we are saying, use certain nibbles for certain things and these are two, two contradictory things you know uh, avoiding is a negative you know yeah you should not use what, this and what? that but then use this for that purpose and use this for that purpose uh, what is the draft trying to do so I mean, the draft is trying to say here are the values that have already been defined for the first nibble but zero I, I, is I thought and, and, they were not. I, I, did anyone say that four has to be for V4? Or they said avoid V4? No, 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 no. Four, four, four doesn't have to be for V4. No. Four could be the first part of an Ethernet uh, address. Okay. Yes. So I think this draft is worth writing just to write down what the world looks like so that others understand it. Uh, others who are going to design, you know, protocols in the future. Because you know, we all created this mess and we're having a, a, a rather an interesting time describing it. So I think it behooves us to write it down and document it. 
And Tarek, to answer your question, you you want to avoid four and six only for these um, uh, you know legacy hardware that when they see the first nibble after after the MPLS stack being four, they immediately you know start trying to load balance based on IPv4 exactly. uh, or IPv6. I uh, so yeah, so but you, in the we want to avoid you, that. In, but in the registry. Against four, what are you going to write? Take in but to, basically the registry is going to say um, zero as a post stack or you know as the first nibble is a detnet control word or a pseudo wire control word. One is and it says what it is, but something to do with OAM, I think. And then four, um, basically these are values not to use because they're already defined. They have a meaning against them, and um, you know, as um, Stuart points out, none of this, you know, will hold any water as long as there are folks out there putting Ethernet frames with no control word. But if you put that aside and say nobody is going to put Ethernet control uh, frames with, uh, uh, you know, every Ethernet control, uh, every Ethernet frame put into a pseudo wire will have a control word, then that first nibble, um, zero means something, one means something, four doesn't necessarily mean anything, but just avoid it, six, avoid it. But the registry says, here are what, you know, thing, here are the things to avoid because they have a pre-existing meaning. So use a new one. So you can use two, you can use, you know, seven, eight, nine, uh, and if you want to create a new type of post stack data, here are the values that are available. So I agree with Stuart that writing down what we've already done is is very helpful. Uh, it's you know something we should have done a while ago. Um, but I also want to take it forward and say, if you were to put you know ten in the post stack in the first nibble, um, we can assign a meaning to that. I I'm, I'm still have doubts, you know, a, a transit router does not know that there is a control word. And I don't know if uh, MAC addresses uh, are mandated not to start with zero. Um, oh, no, 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 MAC, look, we're forever going to have that problem or for, for at least for my lifetime as a uh, network guy, um, exactly. we're going to have that problem. Put that aside for a second. If people are disciplined so that um, there's going to be a control word ahead of every Ethernet packet, then that first nibble is very much under our control. And so now you can say, if that first nibble is zero, it is uh, a pseudo wire control word or a detnet control word. If that first nibble is one, it is whatever. If that first nibble is uh, five, it's a beer header. If our first nibble is seven, eight, nine, ten, we will define it and put it in the registry. That's what that's what my goal with this thing is. Okay. okay. Four and six, just forget about, right? We're not going to ever use those. Those are reserved. Don't you know, don't ever use those. But you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, you can assign a new meaning to them. And if you come back to the argument that there are naked Ethernet packets in there, yeah, we're screwed. I mean, if if people send Ethernet packets without um, uh, without a control word, yeah, that's a problem we already live in. I mean, a bunch of us tried to mandate getting rid of them, and we failed last time. Sorry, could you say that again? Um, yeah, I I know, and I, I but I I think we don't give up. We, just keep going. You know, I think the number of such instances is going down because the moment you get some reordering or something that has um, that uh, people don't like, um, they're going to go back and say, you know, maybe we can't take that router out of uh, out of the network, but we can try to prevent because at every ingress you can say you push the control word on, right? So it's not a matter of necessarily taking those routers out of the network. 
It is making sure that if they are in ingress for an Ethernet pseudo wire, that they will push the control wire on. And if there's enough pain, you know, people will do that. But I mean, this this thing, for example, someone saying, okay, let's use five for beer. They just came up with a number out of their hat because, you know, zero, okay, we don't want to use zero, we don't want to use one, four and six are uh, forbidden, so we'll just use five. I mean, I want to put some order to that, but not only put some order to that, I want to say the next, you know, let's not, I mean, what, how you said makes a lot of sense, but we're just wasting that first nibble. Let's just be careful about what that first nibble value is. And so, you know, instead of saying, you know, the first nibble is zero and I'll have a, a type, you know, deeper in, so the next byte after the first nibble, I can say the first byte can be the type, but don't, you know, just avoid zero, one, four, five, six as the first nibble of that byte. You still have a lot of values left. Okay. Um... I, I see Loa is still raising your hand. Do you still want to comment on this or should we move to the next uh, item? Uh, we don't have much time, but maybe we can. Um, okay, you lowered your hand. Um, do we want to conclude on the discussion? Like uh, we will continue the draft. I think it, uh, we have some agreement that it's useful to document the behaviors that we have today. Um, I, I that's the feeling I'm getting. Is is that um, okay? Uh, I see G now is raising his hand. Um, yes, go ahead. I comment. Uh, I yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me? No, it's very faint. But try again. Oh, uh, uh, right. how about now? It's better. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, I see the in this uh, registry. Number four and six are defined to identify the IPv4 or IPv6 header. But, uh, in the IPv4 and IPv6 header format, this field Which is not. Is this? What registry G is this? In the first naval registry. Oh, you mean in, in the draft? draft. And the draft. Yeah, okay. yeah. The, uh, the, the, uh, the, the value four and six are used to identify the IPv4 or IPv6 header. But uh, actually, the format of the V4 or V6 header, uh, this field is not called a uh, nibble. This is uh, different from the other uh, cases in this uh, registry. So, do we need to update the V4 and V6? Thank you, G RFCs? G That's a good point. I will remove that. I will change it to reserved um, because you're right. It should not be. Uh, IPv4 or IPv6, it should be reserved, do not use, um, as far as this registry goes. So I oh, agree okay. with you. Yeah, thank you. Although, although I think it would be useful to have some text in somewhere or other explaining why. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll do that. Okay, thanks. Thanks. All right, I'm going to close this discussion saying that uh, we will continue on this work and uh, uh, I think there was uh, progress done on it. Like there was a poll. Uh, did we start the poll on this or not, uh, Kriti? I think we did uh, uh, adoption poll. Um, I don't know, but but there were definitely were some comments um, okay. from Bruno and others. Um, so I think you know if there wasn't a poll, it would be helpful to have a poll. Yes. And remember, it's an adoption poll. It's a, is this a starting place? Do we want to do this piece of work? It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect until it goes to the ISP. Und un understood. But as far as I know, uh, we haven't polled this document yet. Uh, that is one reason I had my question on how we, you know, how we want to progress it. Uh, maybe that's the right time to ask the authors, is this a good starting point to pro progress on the poll. You know, yes. What, yes. 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 I think so. Yep, I agree. Okay, thank you. 
Um, we do have not much time and uh, and the next item on the agenda was for Tony to talk about the ELI. Before you talk deeper, uh, Tony, about this, do you think the, the time left five minutes is enough uh, for you to cover this? Otherwise, we can defer it for next time. We give um, it so, no, I don't think that there's enough time. Um, I was not intending on talking deeper. Um, this was, I did not request to be put on the agenda. Um, and I'm not sure what was requested here other than to have time to discuss this again. Uh, I presented this at IETF and there was a great deal of discussion then. And I was asked to present a draft as well. I have now published that draft. It sent to the mailing list. It has received zero comments on the mailing list. Um, what is the point of this? Um, I, I do remember that uh, people asked for the draft to be there uh, when you presented, Tony. And um, uh, thank you for producing it and uh, you know to give you the credit. Um, I do encourage people that were uh, you know um, commenting on the concerns raised uh, in this draft uh, to 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 comment if if they still have their opinion on the use of ELI and uh, if they don't have uh, any further comments we I think we can consider the ELI approach then uh, not feasible based on your recommendations but if they do have concerns we would like to hear them so I think I'm the one that put it on the agenda. And the reason I wanted to do this is actually to see if it, we need a further discussion. Uh, we had slides last time we talked about it here. We didn't have the draft. So I wanted to see if we uh, was making things any clearer with the draft. If we don't have any discussion yet, then I agree with uh, not going ahead with the ELI approach. So I think it would be helpful if the chairs were to publish uh, or, or send an email to that effect that um, we now have a draft documenting why using ELI, um, you know, we will publish it, or we'll, you know, as, I don't know, Worst current practice, I don't know something, and and consider ELI uh, reuse of ELI dead. <clears throat> I think that will definitely create a you know a set of uh, responses, and once we've sort of solved those, then we can document that um, we should not reuse the ELI, uh, assuming that's the working group consensus, and then we can um, publish this uh, this document in whatever form. To, to say why we should not reuse it and make that a policy for uh, the world. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. But I think, I think publishing it as an informational so that we can point to it um, in order to um, keep appropriate sanity in the design would be a good thing to do. Okay. Um, that was Stuart that said that. Uh, I'm I'm typing that. Okay. Then we should probably carry this over to next week. Yeah, but I mean I think it's a short it's a short enough uh, discussion as long as we validate its correctness, which we need to do um, um, just for our own sort of sanity. Then I think we should uh, publish it as a an information as a an informational somewhere too that that basically um, um, deals with that aspect of the design. So, Tony, just to follow up on what you said, I think if the chairs uh, send a, a mail saying we have a documentation of why you're reusing the ELI is not a good idea. Um, if no one has any follow up to this, uh, we are going to document that as a decision of the working group. That should generate some some comments and then it might make sense to come back and discuss this again. If that does not raise any comments, we don't have to bring this back to this uh, to this group. No, but we probably should uh, get the chairs to uh, adopt it and push it through into an yes. RFC or some form. Yes, yes, absolutely. 
let me give Rakesh a chance. He's uh, raising his hand to comment on this. Yeah, so thanks, Tarek. Um, so I think um, no one asked to um, uh, write a draft. Uh, you may want to check the recording. This is uh, um, my recollection of it. And the second point is that uh, there were a lot of comments uh, during the presentations where um, people uh, made gave feedback and whatnot. So uh, uh, what happened to those? Uh, are they addressed in the draft or um, there has not been any closure on all of the discussions that have happened uh, at that time? So, so Rakesh, on the first part, uh, there was offline emails, and I would uh, refer you to Zafar. Uh, he was the one requesting, at least, uh, privately. So you may want I to- I have not seen it. Uh, yeah, so if yeah. there was offline, uh, when I wouldn't have seen it. Um, yeah. Um, but there were a lot of discussions and feedbacks given uh, for this uh, approach uh, during the work, this design team, as well as during the ITF session. But um, uh, yeah, the main feedbacks I remember were many informations uh, presented were subjective or not correct. And uh, I don't know what happened to uh, all of that. Uh, right? A chance to the uh, to Tony and authors to respond if they if they addressed all the comments. Uh, uh were raised so uh tony where uh, did you get i mean i'm getting the mixed feeling here uh, were there comments on the draft uh, rakesh are you saying there were comments on the draft or there were comments uh, um, you know on the on the slides presentation. Presentation. presentation yeah okay are you able to uh, you know because the draft was put um, in more details so maybe they addressed them in the draft did you read the draft so uh I'm not hearing anything. I don't know if it's just me. I also lost okay. audio. So the other thing I would say with all this is going, oh. going, going through the adoption process will tease out all of these issues that are being that are coming oh. out of the book right now. That's another way to to deal with it, Stuart. I, I, yeah, I mean, if you're in adoption, they can raise the concerns again. But yeah, I heard Rakesh, we lost you, and then I don't know if you're still there, Rakesh. I'm here. You hear me? Yeah. Now we are. Yeah. Can you repeat what you said? We didn't hear what you said last. No, there were many people who commented during the presentations um, in, and also in the chat. And um, it's not clear if they were addressed or not, and probably need to go back to the people I who think. had the comments to see if they were addressed. We do, do an adoption call, and the IETF process would do the right thing. Yeah, I would second that. We will, we will, uh, you know, the draft was put there in public, and I think if the people, you know, can take a look and give their feedback, uh, it would be appreciated. Uh, I, I don't have a list of people who raised comments uh, myself. Unless you want to take on that, Rakesh, you know, produce the list of people. No, I'm I'm not. Uh, <laughs> whoever uh, was the minute taker as well as the recording. Uh, the, I will go back to the minutes and see if there were comments there. But I, I think well, that to give Tony, you know, to be fair with him, he did document this and uh, and the authors as well. So it, you know, uh, it might be worth reading through the draft, the latest version of the draft, and then commenting again. Yeah, I, I think the, the, you should put the onus on the people, not on yourself to go find the minutes and so on. A draft has been produced. Um, if people, you know, don't agree with some aspects of the draft, they should say so on the mailing list. Uh, as uh, Stuart said, if none of that happens, then it'll get teased out during the adoption call. Um, but but the whole point of having a draft is so that all of this is now <clears throat> on the mailing list and there's an open discussion on this. Thank you, Kiriti. Um, uh, I, I thought I saw someone in the queue, but now nobody's there except Rakesh. 
Um, I mean, the only point is that there were a lot of good discussions, and uh, I mean, it's it's just to say nothing happens to it. And uh, while well, if you have said something, you have to say it again, kind of. Um, but anyway, if that's the process, that's the process. Uh, okay, I can repeat what I said. Um, all right, um, I think we're out of time, and we are past a uh, allotted time. Uh, Greg, I want to apologize myself on the behalf of the chairs. Uh, we didn't get to your uh, uh, slot, so it no might. Problem. We'll do it next week. Next week. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much for attending. And I think I'm going to stop here unless Loa, last words uh, or the chairs uh, are yours, uh, or I can stop the recording. I think you can stop the recording. Uh, I